Hey y'all, Future Ando here. Before we get to the video, just wanted to make two quick announcements. First of all, thank you so much for your patience with this video. I've finally been able to replace my old computer with a new, more powerful one, which means that my editing process will really be sped up a lot in the future, and I won't have to deal with my old decrepit laptop crashing every time I so much as looked at the After Effects logo, let alone opened it. This hopefully means that I'll be able to get videos out a bit faster in the future. Maybe even some live streams when you least expect it. Also, I've started up a Patreon for the channel. I'll be offering rewards like early access, sketches and works in progress, video credits, and even some physical rewards. In fact, from now until the end of July, I'll be sending all patrons who pledge $5 or more an exclusive membership card. After that, then they'll be limited to the $10 up tier, so go ahead and check out the link below if you're interested. Bye! Hello there, Internet! This is Ando's Art Tips. Well, I teased the topic in my 5 things that can save an OC video, today is going to be all about clothes. As always, I'm going to try my best to be as comprehensive on the topic as I can be, but this is a really massive subject, and if there are any points you feel like I could have included, please feel free to share that knowledge in the comment section below. Anyways, let's jump straight into the topic. Here are 7 ways to rock costume design, in no particular order. Number 1. Locations Starting out, let's first take a look at location. Certain places can really affect the way characters dress. This can be incredibly broad, like in another planet, or highly specific, like a private academy. Places may also have specific fashions based off of what's nearby as well. A mountain town will have different styles than a city by the sea, and a country that has a lot of trade may have more diverse sense of fashion than a secret village. Having clothes that fit a location can really add to the immersion of your world and help you create a good sense of atmosphere. For example, say you have a mobster story taking place in an urban city. It would then be really jarring if all your characters wore Victorian gowns or bunny suits as their day-to-day -day garb with zero explanation. Now to be honest, that does sound hilarious, and I would most likely be the only one that would appeal to, but if we are trying to create a serious story in that location, having clothing that would match the location would be a much better option and won't confuse the audience. Paying attention to the dress of specific areas can also help you create contrasts when characters from other locations show up. You can also show how a character becomes more immersed in an area when they start to dress in local fashions. A really good example of using clothing to indicate location is Avatar The Last Airbender. Each nation has a very specific style of dress and it is easy to identify where a character is from purely by their clothing alone. This is a really great way to have costuming work to make your world feel more expansive and lived in. Another way to add to this is by using... Number 2. Time Periods Having a specific time period really goes hand in hand with location for the most part. Looking at any country's style of dress, it can change drastically from generation to generation. Fashion, since its inception, has been constantly shifting and changing with the times. From ancient robes, to ornate overcoats and gowns, to yoga pants. Also keep things like beauty standards and the availability of certain materials in mind as well. A few examples of this would be in the 1920s, women's fashion was decidedly more boxy and less form-fitting than the fashions of the 50s. Western men's fashion became less eye-catching and ornate in the late 1700s due to the rise of dandyism, popularized by the likes of the immaculately dressed, but totally not trying too hard, Beau Brummel. Keeping a time period in mind can help you flesh out your world by having your characters look like they belong in the setting. You can also use clothing from different eras than the setting to indicate things like time travelers, ghosts, or period actors. Even if you set your story in another world or in a fantasy setting, you can still add in a lot of interesting details like drawing inspiration from real life fashion into your fantasy world, or even showing evolution of style in your story's universe. Number 3. Climate. This one is pretty straightforward, but also really important. Climate can add a new dimension to thinking about how characters should be dressed. People who live in places with consistently cold or hot weather will end up adopting fashions and clothing choices that accommodate these climates. These can be especially important when looking at more traditional clothing worn by people before things like heaters and air conditioners were invented. Clothing would need to be more functional to better regulate body temperatures. It's also good to consider a few clothing changes when having your characters travel from place to place. 
For example, if you send them to a frozen tundra, it wouldn't really make sense to have them walking around in their typical shirt and pants like it's no big deal unless it's gray from fairy tale. Keeping things like changes in seasons and even humidity in mind can also affect clothing choices as well. Coats and long sleeves would make a lot more sense for the winter than the summer, and cycling through seasonal clothing can also help convey the passage of time in your story. Number 4. Occupations Knowing what a character's occupation is can really help you figure out how to dress them. Things like business attire, police uniforms, lab coats, and supersuits can really clue you into what a character does by using fairly obvious context clues. It's really unlikely that you will look at a character in a flower-covered apron and conclude that they must be a railroad conductor, instead of the obvious conclusion, a baker. Using clothing, you can inform the audience about what a character does without needing to outright point it out. Occupations also don't necessarily need to apply only to jobs, but really anything that occupies a character's time that would have a specific uniform or look. Even their social or economic class can be revealed by things like how fashionable or what quality their clothes are. Say your character plays tennis, performs in a band, serves as a knight, or lives like a drifter. Each of those characters will need a specific style of dress that helps clue the audience in. On the flip side, you can also use occupational clothing to subvert the audience's expectations. Putting a character that does not match a specific occupation, whether in looks or in personality, into those outfits can create a range of effects, anything from comedic to sinister. Clothing can really tell you a lot about a character. Speaking of which... Number 5. Personality Personality can determine a lot about how a person chooses to dress themselves. Someone with a shy or modest personality may choose to dress themselves in less flashy colors or clothes that cover more of their body than a more provocative character would. Sporty or rambunctious characters may choose to wear gym clothes or looser garments that are easy to move around in, while cool characters might have a more trendy or visually striking outfit. Flashy characters are likely to go for outrageous or over-the-top clothing, while prim and proper characters are likely to wear clean-cut and more formal clothing. Even uniforms worn by multiple characters can show off personalities, whether that's adding something like a specific color that represents the character, or even how they wear the outfit. For example, a rough delinquent is less likely to wear a school uniform as neatly as a normal student, and might dress more sloppy or leave out certain parts of the uniform. There are plenty of ways you can show off your character's personality through the way they dress. You can also push the effectiveness of your costumes by thinking about how the characters would pose and carry themselves while wearing specific outfits. Some characters may act differently depending on what they wear. For some more information on that concept, please check out my posing video. Number 6. Aesthetic So what exactly do I mean by aesthetic? Well, to put it simply, I'm referring to what makes the costume design unique. You can add flair to the character's design, like tattoos, face paint, and masks, or things that add to the fashion of the clothing design itself, like zippers, buttons, rivets, and belts. Also keep in mind any aspect of the world that would affect the way people dress. For example, Wreck-It Ralph has a few great instances of aesthetic in the costuming that really helps differentiate all the game worlds. Hero's Duty has a space battle theme, and looks the most realistic and gritty out of all the games. This is contrasted with Sugar Rush, which has a candy motif that is even incorporated in the clothing designs for a really charming effect. Other forms of aesthetic can showcase cultural or social aspects of a costume design, like in Coco or Moana. Aesthetic can also be very specific to a character's appearance, like Sherlock Holmes's hat and pipe, or Little Red Riding Hood's Red Riding Hood. Other bits of aesthetic that can be specific are disguises, like magical girls or superheroes. Aesthetic can also encompass the use of art styles, coloring techniques, and interesting silhouettes to make your clothing design stand out. That extra bit of flair can really help you push an ordinary costume into a really interesting direction and in turn make a more interesting costume design. Number 7. Materials Finally, I'll end off with the most technical section of the video. Considering the materials used in your costumes when you draw them can really add to the appeal of your design and your art as a whole. When you look at different kinds of fabrics, there are a lot of differences between them. Some fabrics have large fibers, some have funky patterns, others are thick and felted, while others are feather light and have a sheen to them. Because there are so many different properties in fabrics, it stands to reason that not all of them will lay, fold, or catch light quite the same, which is something that often gets overlooked, especially by beginners. 
When you decide to design a costume, it's always a good idea to think about what fabrics you might use if you were to make the outfit in real life, and how those specific fabrics would behave. Thicker and stiffer fabrics like wool or leather will not fold or bend in the same way that light fabrics like chiffon or silk will. Looking at the way that different fabrics act while being worn will really help give you a better idea of how to draw those materials and help differentiate them. Materials also come into play with all of our past categories as well. Some locations, time periods, and occupations can determine what fabrics are available, practical, or fashionable to use. Personality can also be a determining factor as well. For example, you can tell that there are a lot of different materials in the costume designs for Frozen. Lots of furs and warm, fuzzy materials are used in Kristoff's clothes, which makes a lot of sense for him as he is an ice harvester. He is also dressed in mostly dark tones and his clothes have barely any instances of dyed fabrics used. They are function over fashion and also match his easygoing and outdoorsy personality. Meanwhile, Anna's clothing features a lot of fine-looking materials with decorations and ornamentation in bright colors. They show that she can afford more luxurious clothing that has a lot more craftsmanship and tailoring applied. This makes sense because she is a princess and able to afford finer clothing that wouldn't be as readily available to more common girls, but not so ornate that she looks haughty or unapproachable, which matches her friendly personality. Elsa's clothes, however, showcase a lot of the unapproachability that Anna's does not. At the beginning of the movie, she wears very long dresses with high collars, as well as gloves, minimizing any skin showing on her body and closing her off to any possible contact with others. On top of that, her Ice Queen outfit has a lot of aesthetic. It's implied that the outfit is some sort of snow or ice material that has a really ethereal and lucid quality to it. The train acts a bit stiffer and holds its shape a lot more than something like tulle would in that quantity, and it has an airy and light quality that no other fabrics in the movie has. This stark contrast with the rest of the materials available in the story's world adds to the uniqueness of Elsa's powers and really makes her stand out from the rest of the cast of characters. And those are just some of the ways that you could utilize materials in your costume designs. Even if you are going for a simplistic art style, you can still find plenty of ways to get across different fabric weights and folds to the audience. So that was 7 ways to rock costume design. I really hope that I was able to give you a bunch to consider when picking out clothing designs for your characters. Like I said before, there was so much I could have covered in this video, and if you feel like I might have glossed over or missed something entirely, please feel free to share it with us in the comments. I've got only one supplemental material for you this time. When it comes to designing costumes, reference photos and catalogs are always a great place to get started. I personally like to pick up old photo books about different eras from used bookstores or check sites like Getty Images or Pinterest for some great resources. It will really help you think of ways to capture who a character is as well as the setting and not only will your character design be stronger, your world building will be as well. And with that, this video has come to a close. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.